According to the country's Fisheries Bureau, China is now exporting a whopping two-thirds of the world's cultured seafood. This mammoth quantity of seafood is cultivated traditionally as well as produced in modernized floating farms. From the reports, it was found that China consumes about 65 million tons of seafood and from these massive quantities, 50 million of which are produced from highly buzzed and sustainable floating farms. But what exactly are these floating farms? How can fish be grown on floating farms? In which provinces of China can once spot these massive floating farms? While the concept of floating farms is fascinating to every nation, but China is already 10 steps ahead and has already begun practicing this phenomenal idea of floating farms. Thanks to dedicated fish farmers who made this possible by transforming those tiny fishing villages into the epicenter of the yellow croaker industry. This is a place in southeast China's Fujian province where 75% of the nation's total output is produced. Exciting, isn't it? Let's buckle up to find some more exciting and crazy facts about China's floating fish farms. When we wonder about artificial techniques for breeding fishes, it might sound absurd but the fact which is usually ignored is the emptied sea due to overfishing. So there was no option left but to build artificial breeding farms as now it was a necessity for society as they had to serve the needs of individuals. So apart from building massive floating farms, they have also extended their skills by culturing ponds to open waters such as lakes, rivers, reservoirs and channels by incorporating cages, nets and pens which is one of the most recent and known floating fish farms in China. One of those giant floating fish farms is capable of producing a similar output to that of Chagan, which is one of the largest freshwater lakes. So approximately 3,700 tons of fish can be produced from this giant floating fish farm. This world's giant floating fish farm is named Guaxin 1. Talking about the size of the fish farm, it can assemble more than about 15 gigantic tanks and each of these tanks will be larger than two standard swimming pools. It measures almost around 250 meters in length and 45 meters in width and has a displacement of about 130,000 tons. All these reports are given by state broadcaster CGTN and it's expected to be powerful enough to survive typhoons. This massive floating farm is already out for sale from the eastern port city of Qingdao and is expected to float to the Yellow Sea, East China Sea and the South China Sea. It is set to travel to varied regions, so a variety of fishes can be cultivated depending on the ideal temperature required for fish. Soon, the results of this massive fish farm will be out and it's presumed to be sold in East China Sea. When coming to the technology part of this fish farm, there is a constant supply of seawater in the cabins, so the environment is stable and appropriate for cultivating fish as well. Being impressed with the technology and the success, the nation has planned to build the same models and those will be active by 2024. One such offshore fish farm is also available in Norway, where it's the perfect place to carry out research, trials and development activities. The ship farm aims to reduce the environmental footprints, eventually improving fish welfare. This floating city is capable of cultivating more than 1.1 million baby salmon and those baby salmon that are once grown into older ones will soon be out in the market. However, another crazy idea to boost aquaculture is the increased growth rate and decreased breeding time of various fish in mobile aerating aerobic detoxifying technology. This was launched a decade back in some parts of southeastern China where more than 100 acres of perch and bass farms were established. This new technology in China was first implemented in Zhejiang province and was prominently used to control environmental pollution and save billions of metric tons of water annually. Interesting, isn't it? The best part about this technique is it reduces the level of ammonia and nitrogen levels in each pond or lake or reservoir, eventually helping to improve the circulation of oxygenated water. Also, the safety level is pretty satisfactory in this technique as it reduces the probability of infected species of the ship, which means farmers have access to the highest profit yields from this innovative agriculture technique. These techniques are so interesting to hear about, but in reality, these modernized and technologically advanced agriculture practices are harming the natural resources of China. It's not only China but other nations as well that are facing the consequences. And if in the coming years this method is continued extensively, then it might lead to harmful effects on the environment. What other measures are taken to improve agriculture practice in China? China is highly diversified in inland agriculture in 17 different provinces, which covers 485.8 million hectares of land, and from this entire inland agriculture, China produces more than 10.938 million tons. It's been already four decades now since China is practicing inland agriculture, 
where initially they were able to produce 813,000 tons and gradually the numbers raised to 485.8 million and now the numbers are extremely high. The next fascinating practice to boost the agriculture industry in China is the symbiotic rice fish agriculture system. In the Xijiang province in Qingshan County, Longshan village, we can spot rice fish farming which means they're creating a symbiotic relationship between fish and rice paddy. It is a sustainable solution for fish breeding as well as for producing organic vegetation and nutrients. Another benefit of combining agriculture and fish breeding is that fish waste and carbon dioxide produced by fish are excellent manure for rice plants. And in return, fish will eat all larvae and weeds which will help in lowering costs and farm labor. So with this crazy relationship between paddy fields and agriculture, protecting the environment and producing food is an easy task for China which eventually attracts tourists and helps in local economic development. It is already a tourist attraction because such innovative projects cannot be spotted somewhere outside China now. These innovative techniques are precisely used in the coastal waters of the Bohai Sea, the Yellow Sea, the East China Sea, and the South China Sea. Each area has its own specialty and some of those fish farms cultivate varied types like shrimps, oysters and fish in raised man-made enclosures. The construction of these floating farms is designed with utmost accuracy. These floating nets are interconnected with wooden pathways and platforms. Apart from designing for the breeding of fish, experts have also constructed a special structure that connects houses and huts so to provide a proper housing structure for the entire family. Another excellent cultivation that amazed all of us is shellfish, which is happening in Luyan Bay in southeastern China's Fujian province. Most of the time, these shellfishes are used in Asian banquets and also exchanged as gifts. Another exciting innovation in the breeding of fish is named crayfish, which is amazingly carried out under solar panels. Under solar panels? Is it possible? Yes, it is. The breeding of crayfish is carried out under the solar panels in East China's Jiangsu. On one side, the power is generated from the solar panels and underwater breeding of crayfish is done. So in the exciting idea, China has benefited in both ways. There are almost 100,000 solar panels fitted on the water for clean energy generation and this method of agriculture is also monetarily beneficial to Jiangsu. One most fascinating fact is that these large spread solar panels obstruct the sunlight and allow very little to negligible sunlight to fall on the water. This limited sunlight contact reduces the temperature of the water which eventually is a green flag for the breeding of crayfish. The entire process for breeding as well as solar panels is automated so only 6 to 8 personnel are hired to maintain the entire process. The total energy generated from these solar panels is distributed to 20,000 houses all around the year. This sustainable development is helping to grow fish farming as well in China. The next modern fish farming technique can be spotted in Fatan town of East China's Fujian province. In this province of China, they specially concentrate on breeding puffer fish and by just doing this, the entire town's annual output is as high as $43.4 million which might have even increased in the past few years. The town is spread across 30,000 acres of land and the entire place is designated for breeding the poisonous puffer fish. In total, the town can produce about 30,000 tons of puffer fish. In the single town, there are about 25 companies that are actively engaged in breeding puffer fish. It is poisonous but at the same time, it can be consumed if processed with utmost safety and care. These fishes are known to contain a deadly substance called tetrodotoxin. However, the town is so efficient in breeding puffer fish that they know how to reduce the toxin levels in the fish. There are around 20 restaurants that are cooking and serving authentic dishes of puffer fish and serving them to the citizens. Every chef cooking puffer fish is trained with every minute detail so the end product is safe to consume. So the varieties to improve agricultures in China are endless and China is tapping on every possible opportunity to improve. So finally, what are your thoughts on China and its amazing growth in the agriculture industry? Do let us know your views in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching how China is carrying out its fish farming, make sure to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the next video.